Lesson 6.1 is about inequalities. Okay, first we're going to learn about the properties of inequality. And these are just from algebra, but they apply to geometric figures as well. So properties of inequality, we're just going to usually call these POIs, properties of inequality. The first one is this. If A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then what conclusion can you make? Well, if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A, logically, must be greater than C. This can be applied to a geometric figure if, as follows. If I have a triangle and a uh, side AB, the one at the bottom, is greater than AC, so the measure or length of AB is greater than AC, and then AC is greater than CB, what can I conclude? Well, look at I'm comparing AC in both of these. AB is bigger than AC, and then AC is bigger than CB. And it's obvious by looking, AB, side AB, must be greater than side CB. Very logical. OK, a second property of inequality is that a sum is greater than any of its parts. So if A is composed of B and C, if it's the sum of B and C, then obviously A has to be greater than B and A has to be greater than C. Again, logic. So the application of that property in a geometric setting is this. Let's say we have a big angle, angle BAD, and it's comprised by angle addition postulate of two smaller angles, angle BAC plus angle CAD. Well, it should follow logically then that the big angle, BAD, is greater than either of its parts. So it's greater than the measure of angle BAC. And of course, it's greater than the measure of angle CAD. A third property of inequality is this. If A is greater than B, and then C is greater than or equal to D, I can add the C to one side and the D to the other side of this original inequality, A is greater than B, and the inequality remains true. So it's just the notion that if I have an inequality that's true and I add the same thing to both sides or I add a greater thing to the side that's greater, that the inequality will remain true. So A plus C greater than B plus D. So here's an application of that in a geometric setting. If I have three segments, let's say I have, I'm thinking of AB and CD and segment CD is longer than segment AB. So CD greater than AB. And I can go ahead and take the red segment, EF, and add it to both sides, add it to AB and add it to CD. It should remain true that CD plus EF will be greater than AB plus EF. Now let's say I take a, a segment, instead of making it equal, I add the same segment to both sides, Let's say I take a longer segment, let's call it GH, the blue segment, and I add this to the longer original segment, CD. I'll, the inequality will still remain true. So CD, if that's a longer segment to begin with, and I add a longer segment to that than I do to the short segment AB, so with AB, let's say I still add the shorter segment EF, my inequality, again, will remain true. So the idea is if I add the same thing to both sides of an inequality, it remains true. Or if I add a larger thing to the side of the inequality that's larger, it will remain true. OK, and the last properties are just straight from algebra. And this is, it, uh, this is about multiplying and dividing um, two constants, two numbers or values by the same thing. Uh, if A starts off, A is greater than B, and C is a positive number, then I know that if I multiply A by C and I multiply B by C, that the left side, A times C, will still be larger. And the same goes with division. If I divide A by C and I divide B by C, A over C 
will still be greater than B over C. In other words, uh, if I multiply both terms or, or two values in an inequality by a positive number or I divide both terms by a positive number, the inequality remains true. Now what happens is if I switch uh, and, I, and instead of a positive, I multiply both sides by a negative, then I'm going to reverse the direction of the inequality. Okay, whoops. So if I say A times C and C is negative, then this inequality is going to reverse direction. And AC will be less in value than BC. And when I divide by a negative, same thing. A over C will now be less than B over C. So when I, you know, from algebra, when you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the numbers flip across to the other side of the number line, the mirror image, and the, all of the relationships reverse. So an application of one of the properties of equality is the exterior angle inequality theorem. And what this theorem says is very logical. If we know that angle 1 is equal to, it's the sum of the two remote interior angles, angle 2 and angle 3, to their measures, then we know individually that angle 1 must be greater than both of those. So angle 1 must be greater than the measure of angle 2. And the measure of angle 1 must be, whoops, angle 1, yeah, start over. The measure of angle 1 must also be greater than the measure of angle 3. So the sum is greater than any of its parts. So simply stated, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Okay, so a few examples. Um, first of all, here's a triangle, and it's given that side RS is less than side ST. So a system that we can use for marking this within one triangle is I can say sar mark side RS like this, and then ST is greater than RS, RS less than ST, so I'll put more tick marks on ST. Then the second statement is that ST is less than RT, so RT has got to be longer still. Can I draw a conclusion from this? Yes, I can. I can conclude without a doubt that RT must be greater than RS. Or I could say that as RS must be less than RT. A second example. If XY is equal to YZ plus 5, then how can I compare XY to YZ and draw a conclusion? Well, sure I can, because XY is the sum of these two things. It has to be greater than either of them. So XY has to be greater than YZ. Okay, another example. If the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B and angle C, in other words, B and C by angle addition postulates sum up to, to B angle A, can I draw a conclusion about B versus C? Think about this because it's as important to know when you can't do something as when you can. And this is a case where no. You cannot draw a conclusion about B and C. They are both the parts of A, and I don't really know how those two compare. So I really can't draw a conclusion. Okay, let's conclude with one proof. I'm looking at a triangle that's made up of two smaller triangles, and I'm going to be given this following information. Angle R is, the measure of angle R is less than the measure of angle TUS. So I'm going to mark R with one swoosh and TUS with 2, just to show that it's a bigger angle. Okay, and I'm supposed to prove that TUR, so I'm supposed to prove that the sum, that this whole big angle, is greater than angle R. Okay, so that should be easy to do, because I can see I get to add SUR to uh, TUS, so I'm going to add a, an angle to both sides of the, my first statement. So. Let's first um, define that angle TUR, that big angle, is composed of, it's the sum of angle TUS plus angle SUR. Okay, now um, 
I'm going to substitute, because I know that R is the same as TUS, in this statement, I can substitute angle R. So I can now say measure of angle TUR, that big angle, uh, is equal to the measure of angle R plus measure of angle SUR. Okay, now both of these, what was the reason for both of these? The reason for both of these was angle addition postulate. All right, then, because TUR, the big angle, is made up of two parts, R and SUR, you know, in this um, statement, I can now say that, well, it has to be bigger than one of its parts. So that is just a plain property of inequality. And that's it.